Hello and welcome to Crowdoscope's podcast series on collective intelligence. Today we are joined by Louis Rosenberg, who is a technologist, serial inventor, entrepreneur, and current CEO and founder of Unanimous AI. Unanimous AI is a company that specializes in swarm intelligence and how it can be used to predict outcomes such as final scores of sports events and even the winners of the Oscars. So Louis, hi, thanks for joining us today. So how did you get into the field of collective intelligence or swarm intelligence in your case? What triggered your interest initially? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, my my original academic work and my, my doctoral work when I was back in school was focused on human computer interaction and I my PhD was exploring how can how can we use technology to amplify human abilities, how to make how to how to make people perform better and uh, this was back in uh, in the early 90s and I was focused at that point on virtual reality and augmented reality and technologies that can allow a single individual to to enhance their performance with uh, with introductions of technology and and I worked in that field of, of virtual reality and augmented reality for uh, for a decade and um, and then I started to to think, well, it's really interesting to to look at how technology can enhance a single person. When you start to think about groups of people, it gets even more interesting. And I started to wonder, you know, are there ways where we can enhance the abilities of of groups, of uh, especially you know large networked groups of people that you can connect together from all over the world? And that's when I started looking at, well, how does you know how does nature do that? Because there are, uh, in in the evolution of social organisms, nature has found ways to make groups smarter. Uh, and it's ultimately the reason why birds form flocks and fish form schools and bees form swarms. They form these these tight real-time systems where large populations can work together in groups to make much better decisions together than they could make alone. And so what, what nature shows us is that there's a, a process that can amplify the intelligence of a population. And biologists call it swarm intelligence. And they, they use the word swarm, even you know, whether it's a swarm of bees or a, or a school of fish, it's still swarm intelligence. And, uh, and in fact, across uh, you know, countless species, uh, evolution has has enabled organisms to to increase their intelligence significantly by thinking together in these systems. And so, for me, the the big question was then: Well, if birds and bees and fish, by thinking together in systems, uh, why can't people do it? And and that's really uh, what what I then have spent. Uh, uh, the last, you know, good number of years exploring, which is, you know, can humans, can people form these real-time systems that uh, that enable us to uh, to amplify our intelligence uh, together? Mm -hmm. So, is that what made you found unanimous AI? Yeah. So, I, I started working in this area, looking at how we can amplify the intelligence of of groups, and I started building prototypes. And um, and again, my my initial systems were really modeled after how how nature does it. So I I modeled it after how how in fact how honeybees can amplify their intelligence. And the, the very first few experiments, because it really started from this idea of you know if it works for these other organisms, it should work for people. We should be able to get smarter together. And even from the very first experiments. It, it worked that we were able to make human groups much smarter, and, and that's when uh, that's when we decided, you know, this we should turn this into a company, and really, you know, really focus resources on how can we make how can we allow human groups all around the world to to create these artificial swarms and be be smarter together. Yeah, and I think it's a very, very exciting project. I mean, your swarm in, swarm technology has been really successful at predicting outcomes of sports events and even the Oscars. So what is your most exciting research project at the moment? Yeah, so we're, uh, 
so we've done a lot of research on you know how can we amplify the intelligence of groups and can we can we quantify that and so we're always looking for things to predict that that, that um, and it's not that it's not that we see this technology as a prediction tool but it's a way to to quantify the benefit and so uh, and and so look at predicting you know we've done lots of predictions from sports to politics to entertainment we last week we just predicted the oscars and in fact we predi- uh we just uh w- what we did to predict the oscars is we had us we got a group of people together who were just movie fans regular movie fans we had 40 regular movie fans and we had them connect together online uh they connected together by artificial intelligence algorithms that, that allow them to think together as a swarm. Uh, some people might refer to that as a, as a hive mind. And we had them predict each of the categories of the Oscars. And, and we always ask people to predict as individuals first, just so we have a baseline. And, and so as individuals, these people were 60% accurate in predicting the Oscars, which, which doesn't sound great, but it's actually pretty hard to predict the Oscars as a lot of categories. Uh, and then um, we had... Uh, we had them predict together as a swarm, and they went from 60% accurate as individuals to 94% accurate in predicting the Oscars when, when they could think, think together as a hive mind. And and in fact, the 94% accuracy was was better than every every major uh, expert. So we, they did better than the Hollywood Reporter, than Variety magazine, than the Los Angeles Times, the New York Times. They predicted, you know, and these are just again 40 regular movie fans connected together by AI algorithms were able to make predictions that were better than all the experts. And so really what we're creating is an artificial expert by connecting people together and harnessing their knowledge and wisdom and insight and intuition, and, uh, and it works. So if I recall it correctly, I think last year the percentages were 40% for individuals and 76 as a swarm. Would you say the increase to this year, is it because the algorithms are getting better? Uh, so there's a, a couple of things. So th- I think the technology keeps getting better. And so um, so we definitely have uh, have better methods and, and technology that allow us to get, you know, almost perfect this year. Uh, I, I also, you know, the 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 actual categories were a little bit easier this year. That's why the baseline of individuals last year was 40% accurate. This year it was 60%. So even the individuals did better this year, um, but the uh, but the swarm did uh, the swarm intelligence did did really really well and uh, actually only missed one one question out of out of all the categories. And um, and so uh, and and one of the things that we you know it's really fun to do these kind of uh, one these kind of big events like um, like the Oscars, but we also do kind of uh, look at long term studies so we can we can prove statistically the the power of of a swarm intelligence. And we just did a study last year with uh, some researchers at Oxford University looking at predicting uh, English Premier League soccer. And what we did uh, what we did was we 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 had uh, swarms predict fifty consecutive games. Um, and so, so 50 consecutive matches, uh, in the EPL and, uh, the, what was really interesting there was that across, you know, we had a population of people and as, in, as individuals, they were 55% accurate in predicting, uh, these matches. <clears throat> but when they, uh, when they worked together as a swarm intelligence, they were, they were 76% accurate. And so they, they were w- way more accurate, uh, predicting uh, the outcome of these games when they could think together as a swarm. Right. That's really impressive, yeah. So I saw on your homepage that you also work with companies. You have one solution or product called Swarm Insights. Would you mind telling us a little more about the projects you have with companies? Yeah, so Swarm Insight is uh, is basically a, a uh, we, we call it an intelligence as a service that we do for for large companies where we generate uh, they want to generate intelligence, and uh, what we can do for them is build build an artificial expert, basically build a, a swarm intelligence by connecting together groups of people that can answer questions for them. Now, the groups of people we connect together could be their customers, uh, it could be uh, existing customers or target customers, and so we can we can pull together a group of fifty, uh, you know. 
50 cell phone users who, you know, who buy cell phones, and we can ask them to come together and predict uh, what features will, will, uh, will resonate best with the population in the cell phone market. Uh, we could do the same thing in, in really in, in any market. But the other thing we, we often do is instead of building a, an artificial expert by connecting together potential customers, we can also uh, build, you know, build an artificial expert by connecting together groups of people from inside of a company. So a large company has, you know, this, you know, their greatest asset is their people. Their people have all kinds of knowledge and wisdom and insight about their products and their markets. And by, um, and we, so we can build a, basically an, an artificial expert, a swarm intelligence of their sales team, of their business teams, and, uh, and make uh, sales forecasts or business forecasts. And so we've done this for, for uh, lots of large companies, and we, we continue to do that. Uh, we have you know, some you know, really big customers, companies like, uh, like Boeing and CNN and eBay. Uh, we just did a project for the XPRIZE Foundation to, to help them bring their experts together and, uh, and think about future prizes for, for the XPRIZE. So we, we do this for, uh, for corporations that basically want to generate amplified intelligence. Mm-hmm. So how do you choose the size of the swarm? I feel like it's always about 20 to 50 people. Is that a maximum size? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, we, we typically have swarms that are between, I would say, 20 and, and 100 people. Uh, we've, you know, we can go larger. We've had swarms of 200 people. What we find is that after, uh, after about 80, 90 people, there's kind of diminishing returns. It doesn't, we don't get, uh, the system doesn't necessarily get smarter uh, after that. And what's, what's really interesting is that we, we find that, you know, it really depends on the question and the type of, uh, you know, how, how focused the question is. But, uh, what we, we've done studies where we've compared a swarm of, let's say 50 people to a you know a large poll of a thousand people, and what we find is that the, the swarms are uh, significantly more accurate, even at even when much smaller size. And so, um, and it, what if you compare two swarms of different sizes? Yeah, no. So we would you say if it was a swarm of a thousand people, would it be more accurate? So what what we find is that um, once we get over a hundred people, the the accuracy really doesn't doesn't go up very much uh it's and so it's you know getting to 100 people is about uh, you know we're kind of it, it's getting to this maximum accuracy at least right now i mean we it, it's definitely an open research question but we do look to nature for guidance and what's what's interesting is that uh bee swarms make these really remarkable decisions that are super accurate and and a, a bee a bee colony has about 10,000 bees but when they make a decision as a swarm they only use like 2 or 300 bees and uh, and so I, and so the uh, it, i'm you know I, it we can conclude that that evolution uh, through millions of years of trial and error you know discovered that after you know once you get to 2 to 300 bees you can get a maximum you know an optimized decision and you don't need to have all 10,000 bees involved and and that's probably uh, the same with uh, with people. I have um, another question uh, regarding your technology. What if you don't know the answers? Because it seems like you need to give a few options and then people can decide which is the best um, answer for the group. But what if you don't want to prime people and actually want to leave it open? Right. <clears throat> so... Uh, we have actually two different ways we can we can ask questions. W one way is that we will uh, we can ask a question and give the the group a set of answers to choose among. And uh, you know if you're if we're doing the Oscars, we know exactly what the options are because <laughs> they're the. Uh, but sometimes you can ask right. Sometimes you can ask a question where you don't necessarily know what the answer options are. And so we actually have a method where we can ask the swarm a uh, question, and then the participants can actually give suggestions. And so they can actually in, in real time give suggestions that then. Uh, populate the system, and then the swarm can then choose among those suggestions. And um, yeah, and and so it it allows us, uh, in some sense, to have the swarm actually, uh, you know, brainstorm and then converge on the you know the best the best suggestions that come out of the process. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's great. Um, I'm actually already coming to my very last question, um, which is what are your hopes and or expectations for the future of the field of swarm intelligence? Yes, I mean, my, my view is that we're really at the, the early stages of this, uh, this technology area. Um, the, already we've shown that uh, when we connect groups of people together into, into these artificial swarms, they significantly amplify their intelligence. We, we think that we can, we can get uh, smarter and smarter and smarter over time as we get better at doing this and, um, and you know, improve, improve the methods and technologies. And so we definitely expect that the, um, the intelligence levels will keep going up. The, the other really interesting thing that, that we always look at is not just how smart are these swarms, but, you know, are they, you know, do they maintain human, human values and human sentiment and human emotions and human interests? And we've, we've been doing, uh, we've doing a, a variety of studies uh, that look at the morality of, uh, of, AI decisions, and what we're finding is that these that when we build a swarm uh, of individuals and we ask them to make, to solve moral dilemmas, they're actually really good at doing that. They're actually, better than if if the group had taken a vote or taken a poll. And and that's one of the things that makes us really excited about this technology is that you know ultimately we're you know our goal is to build a super intelligence by connecting people together. Uh, but when we do it in this way where, where people are involved, we're keeping humans in the loop. And so we're keeping human interests, human values, human morals as part of the process. And we see it as a much safer, much safer path to building a super intelligence than, uh, than a, an AI system that does not involve people. <laughs> because if you build an AI without, without people and just you know, from scratch, then um, you, you're going to create intelligence – and at some point in the next, you know, 20 to 50 years, uh, traditional AI machine learning will, will result in a super intelligence. But that super intelligence, we have no reason to believe it will share our values or share our interests or share our, our morals. If instead we, we build systems that include people in as part of the process, then we're on a path to a, a much safer type of super intelligence that uh, – that will behave, you know, it will be much smarter than, than humans, but it will behave and, and have uh, human interests inherently as part of the system. Mm -hmm. So people would not have to be so scared of AI. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, uh, that's certainly the, uh, the hope. And in, in uh, you know, my view is that the more we can keep human humans relevant in this process of building really smart AI systems, the better. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, thank you very much, Luis, for taking the time. Do you have anything else that you'd like to share? Uh, one thing that's worth mentioning is that, you know, when we, you know, the thing about building a, a swarm AI is that it involves people, it involves participants. And, um, and so we're always looking for, for regular people who want to who wanna participate in swarms and, and help make predictions or help make forecasts um, as part of a real-time swarm. And, and so people can actually join our, our communities at uh, swarm.ai. If, if, they, if they go there, they can, they can let us know what, you know what topics they're interested in. They might be interested in politics or finance or sports, and then they can actually take part and, and help uh, – you know, be part of a super intelligence that, that's making predictions. Great. Thank you for sharing. This was a podcast by Crowdoscope. If you'd like to know more about us or this podcast series, please get in touch and send us an email to hello at crowdoscope.com.